we broke down the product into factors. And the factors were, of course, what we multiplied. Right? And how do we get those factors? If factors multiply up to a product, what will take our product back down to factors? Division. Right? So, what do I have? And I keep forgetting to get my red dot back. There it is. What do I have right here? What math is happening there? Multiply, which means this 4 must be a factor, yes? And this x minus 5 must also be a factor, yes? Because they are multiplying together, correct? What is the product here? What happens when I do 4 times x minus 5? What do I get? 4x minus 20. That is my product. Now all of you should be able to see a relationship between my factors and my product. What, if anything, do you see? What do you see that is the same or related to each other between the factors and the product? Remember, I multiplied to get the product, so how would I go back to get the factors? They're both divided by 4, correct? Now, all of you already have done this many, 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 many times in your life with regular numbers. For example... If we were back in Mrs. Bad Crumble's class and you saw this question, and she said, simplify, what would you do? What would you do with that fraction in grade five? You would reduce it, right? Which is a word I don't like because you're not actually reducing. It's the same value. You're simplifying. What would you do to simplify that? This is another case of you guys knowing how to do something, but because it looks different, you think you can't. You would divide it. You would divide by what? You would start with, what would you start with, Kevin? Two. So that would get you eight and 24. Would you keep going? What would you divide by now? You would divide by four. So first you divided by two, then you divided by four to get two over six. Would you stop there? Nope. nope. You would divide by two again. Does everybody agree? And you would get one third, correct? Yeah. Now, I divided by two, then I divided by four, then I divided by two again. What is two times four times two? 16. So could I not have divided by 16 here? 16 divided by 16 is 1, right? 48 divided by 16 is 3. Is everybody cool with that? What did I just do? I took the greatest common factor of 16 and 48, didn't I? That's 2 to the 4th, right? And that is 2 to the 4th times 3. There is the GCF, correct? just like we practiced last unit. And I divided it out of there, right? So, you already know how to use factors to make things simpler, correct? We divided by the greatest common factor. So here, I have a product, and I want the factors from it. So, Michael has already said, well, we just divided by four. 
Why did we divide by 4? Because 4, I divided by 4, because 4 is the GCF of all the terms. Does everybody see that? So I take my 4x and my 20 and I divide them both by 4. There's the 4 and there's the divisions. Everybody good? All right. The first thing I want for you to do with this next one is tell me what the product is. What is the answer to these two factors? x squared plus 6x, don't forget the middle term, plus 8, right? Which means if that's the product, those are the factors. The first thing I'm going to teach you to do is to do the easy ones. Then we're going to come and deal with those ones. Everybody cool? The point, though, is to remember that to get a product, we multiply. We multiply factors. To get factors, we have, we have to divide products, not products, products. Is everybody cool? Okay. We're going to take a moment. We're not going to, oh, I forgot this thing. Factor 12. Don't prime factor 12. I have to factor 12. This is different. Factoring a single number means you are looking for pairs of natural numbers that multiply to your target. So my target here is 12, yes? I want all the pairs of numbers that will multiply to 12. So 1 times 12, correct? What's the next one? 2 times 6. What's the next one? 3 times 4. And that's it. Does everybody understand the difference between factoring and prime factoring? 1, 12, 3, 4, Two six. Actually, I should have written that the other way around, dummy head. Two six three four. Everybody cool? Do this for eighteen now, just to make sure everybody's cool. What's the first pair? It's always the same. One and eighteen. What's the next one? Two and nine. What's the next one? Three, six, and then I'm done, right? Everybody cool? So everybody can now prime factor, and you can factor numbers, correct? By the end of this lesson, you will know the first step in factoring polynomials, okay? Let's start. This is my target, right? If that's my target, is that a product? or factors right now. That is a product, which means if I want the factors of it, what must I do? I must divide, okay? Now, a lot of you have trouble with the drawings. You don't need to draw this if you don't want to because you know in two seconds, I'm gonna show you how to do it with algebra, okay? But I'm gonna draw it once because it helps a few people, all right? So what I have there is I have six X's. Does everyone agree? And I have three Y's, or three numbers. Does everyone agree? Now, if I am going to factor that, I have to divide them by the same thing, don't I? Just like when I had 16 over 48. I gotta divide by the same thing, right? 
So what are the ways that I can split both of these two groups up the same? If I split this into three, I can split this into three, can't I? So that must mean that and that is one of my factors, right? So what did I do with 6x plus 3? I divided it into, th into threes. So I divided that by 3 and I divided that by 3, correct? And I got, what is this? 2x. And what is this? Plus 1. And how many times do I have to multiply that to get to my product? 3. And there's no reason to hand this any question in in this unit wrong, is there? Because I can check this right now, can't I? What is 3 times 2x? 6x. What is 3 times 1? 3. Did I do it right? Yes. Does everybody see what I have done? I had a product. I used the picture to divide it into 3. Because 3 is the only way I could do them both the same way. I could have divided 6 by 2, right? But can I divide 3 by 2? No. Everybody understand? That's how you do it with a picture. Okay. To do it algebraically, you do this. Step 1. Step one, decide on the GCF of all terms. And we did that, didn't we? Three only has two factors, one and three, correct? Six has one and six and two and three. What number is in both? Three, and it's the biggest one. So we decided on our GCF, right? Step two, divide all terms by the GCF, which we did right here, right? And step three, write your answer like this. The GCF goes on the outside, which we did right here. And then in the middle, we write, now I'm going to use a math word here, the quotient. Product is the answer when we multiply. Quotient is the answer when we divide. So 6x divided by 3 was 2x. That's the quotient. Everybody see what I mean? Yep. Quotient 1, because in this case, we had two quotients, didn't we? Plus or minus, quotient 2, and how long do we go? Till we're out of quotients. Does everybody understand at least one of these two ways? Either drawing it and deciding how you're going to cut it up so it's the same, or looking at the numbers and deciding how you're going to cut it up. Everybody's cool? All right, turn the page over. I'm going to draw it. If you don't want to draw it, you don't have to. It. That is a product, so i got to split it up. What is the only way I can split up 4 and 6 the same? I have to use 2, don't I? I can split 6 into 3 or 2, but I can only split 4 into 2. So if I split that in half, and I split that in half, there is my GCF, right? And what is it? 2x squareds, because there's two of them, plus 3x's. And how many times did I have to do that? Twice, because there's one group and there's the second group. Everybody cool? Michael. I'm getting to that. I'm getting to that, okay? 
Everybody's happy with this, right? Right? Now, you should notice that when I drew this, there was an X there, right? Up and down. And there was an X there, wasn't there? Right? So since that X is in both factors, this X needs to come out as well. Is everybody with me on the drawing? Okay. Now let's do this algebraically because algebraically is actually easier. 4x squared plus 6x. Step one, decide on the GCF. Well, numbers, it's easy. 4 is 1 times 4 and 2 times 2. 6 is 1 times 6 and 2 times 3. What's the biggest number that's in both? 2. So I know I got to divide by 2, correct? Now, but each term, this also has, is x squared, isn't it? So what are the factors of x squared? Well, that's x times x, yes? What are the factors of x? x times 1, right? x. What's the biggest number that's in both of those? A single x. So what do I have to put here? A single x. That is step one because that is our GCF. Is everybody cool? Yeah? Okay, step two is do the division. What is it? What's four divided by two? Two. What's x squared divided by x? What do I do with the exponents? Subtract. Two minus one is one, so it's two x, right? What is 6 divided by 2? 3. X divided by X cancels. So there are our quotients. And what goes out front? The GCF. There is step 2. GCF to the front. Oh, I lie. Sorry. This is step 2. I divide by my GCF. And this is step three. GCF to the front, then the answers. Is everybody good? Now, we are going to skip the next one and come back to it later. But you are going to turn your page over to 127. Greatest common factor. That's what we just did. Okay? I need you to put an arrow here and write what I'm about to write. This is very important. Always try this if you can. If you can do GCF, do it every single time. You may do other factoring, but Always try this first. Okay? Everybody cool? Now, let's do a bit of very easy work with it to make sure everybody is comfortable. I'm going to, somebody give me a number between uh, 10 and 20. 15. Fifteen. 21 would be fine will be my next one. So I got 15 and I got 21 and I'm drawing them in blue for a reason. What is the GCF of 15 and 21? Three. Some of you see it automatically. Some of you have to think about it a little longer. Does it matter? No, it's just time. 15 is one times 15 and three times five. 21 is one times 21 and three times seven. Three is the biggest number that's in both, right? So the GCF is three. Everybody cool? Okay, now I'm going to change it a little. X and X. Now what's the GCF? 3X, because there's an X in both of them. Is everybody cool? Okay, now I'm going to change it again. 3X squared, X squared. Now what's the GCF? 3X squared. Everybody good? Okay, now I'm going to change it again. I'm going to make this 3x cubed. I'm going to make this 3x to the fifth. 
Now what's the GCF? 3x cubed. Why? This is where it breaks down. Everybody's good to hear, and then all of a sudden, what? This is x, 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 right? This is x, 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 right? What's common? The three of them. Is everybody good? Okay. What if I add? So the green one with the green was 3x cubed. Oh, I'm writing in gray. 3x cubed. What if I add in orange 3x, 15x cubed, y squared, 21x to the fifth, y to the fourth. Now what's my common factor? 3, because the 3 stays, 15 and 21 x cubed and y squared because this guy can only cover two of them can ev yes you've given you've asked the next thing i'm going to write zaro get out of my head you got no business in there it's a mess i haven't tidied it up for guests zaro just asked the next question that i was going to write in purple which is 15x, 21y. There's no y's over here. And there's no x's over here. So what's the GCF? There is, because 15 and 21 are still there. It's 3 in purple. Does everybody understand? Okay. 3x and... Two. Oh, we'll get to that too. We'll, we'll get to that too. All right, is everybody cool? Okay. So all you got to remember is you have to divide numbers and sometimes letters. Right? So let's look at this very first one. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. I've got two terms there. Where? In orange? No, because this guy only has two to cover. Oh, did I say y cubed? Yeah. Oh, okay. Because of the x cubed, probably. Okay. So, if I want to factor this, what is step one? I have to decide on the GCF. What is the GCF of 5x and 5? GCF equals 5. Step two... I have to divide my terms by the GCF. So I divide by 5, I divide by 5. Step 3, I write it out. GCF and then my quotients. Quotient 1 plus or minus quotient 2. I only need 2 here because I only have 2 divisions, right? What is the GCF? 5. What's the first quotient? X plus, what's the second quotient? One. Done. Everybody got it? It's not hard, is it? What about six and six X and three? Step one, what's my GCF? Three. Step two, I divide by it. So what do I do with the six X? I divide by 3 and I divide by 3. So I do my division. Step 3, I write it out. What's the GCF? 3. And what's the answers? 2x plus 1. Everybody good? Okay. Third one. What's the GCF? 3. Step 2. Divide by it. Divide by 3, divide by 3, divide by 3. 
Step three, write it out. What's the GCF? Three, what's my first quotient? X squared. Done. Everybody with me? It's not hard, is it? And this one, we've already done that one in our example. What's our GCF? 2x. So I divide them both by 2x. Step 2 is divide. Step 3, what's my GCF? 2x plus 3. Not 3x because the x's are cancelled there, right Zara? Everybody good? And when in doubt, what can you always do? Just check it. Is 3 times x squared 3x squared? Is 3 times 4 12x? Is 3 times 2 6? So I know I'm right. Is 2x times 2x 4x squared? Yep. Is 2x times 3 6x? So I know I'm right. There's no reason to hand something in wrong in this unit, is there? Because how long does it take to check? Literally one second. All right, let's practice three of, four of these, then you're going to be on your own. Step one, what is my GCF of 25, 15, and 30? Five. Five. So I know I'm dividing everything by five. Are there any letters that are in all three? X. How many X's can I get out of all three? That guy's only got one to give. So it's just one, right? Now I rewrite it. What's my GCF? 5X. And then I write all my answers. What's the first one? 5Y. Plus, what's my second one? 3 x not x squared because 2 minus 1 right minus what's the last one 6 x y squared because there was no y on the bottom everybody see how it works okay what's my GCF in 2 or in B nice So what gets written out in the front? Two. And then I write my answers. What are they? Four plus 5a plus 3a squared. Yeah? Okay. What's my GCF in the third one? 5cd. Because there's a c and a d in both of them, yes? Or all three of them, I mean. Okay, now here's where it gets a little weird because we do something here that doesn't make sense with the name of this page. What do we call this page? Greatest common factoring, right? And we have taken out a five because five's the biggest number that comes out of there, right? So let's do this and then see what happens. What number goes to the front? 5CD, and then we put in our answers. What's this? Four, Negative 4 C cubed, right? Minus 6 C squared D minus 5. Is everybody good to there? Everybody. Okay. Now here we like to do, we like to do what I'm about to do. Okay? We don't like this. We don't like this negative at the beginning of this. Okay? So what we like to do there, if we ever get to an answer like this, we like to take that negative out as well. So I divide everything here by negative 1. Or I just take the negative out and change all the signs. Is everybody cool with that? Yeah. So we like our first term in the factoring 
to be positive. So you could have done it back here by taking out a negative five, right? But that messes with the title of the page. So we call the page greatest common factor. Negative five is lower than five. Everybody understand? So what's the second word? Greatest common factor, right? And I could get a negative out all the way across. Negative, negative, negative. Is everybody good? Now we get to Zaro's last question. Is there a GCF between three and two? One, because it's everybody. Is there a letter that's in both of them? No. no. So my GCF is one, isn't it? So if I were to divide by one, put one out front, and then put my quotients, would I ever write one times anything? No. no. So it stays the same. Does everybody get it? All right. Your job today, and you have half an hour with which to complete it, is to do page 128. I don't think you need to do 129. Can I, I just got to check the book because it's divided up weird on my screen. 128 and 129 down to B5, right? Stop here. Stop at that because you can, this is a different kind of factoring. So do 128, 129, and we are quizzing on Monday. Is everybody good? Now, I'm giving you half an hour to do this. That's enough time to go home with no homework. Okay? Michael. 126. I didn't do the last factor. Yes, on purpose. Because that's the next kind of factoring. Maybe. Okay. All right. So everyone is good. Now you will notice crammed right in the middle here is a second quiz. Okay. We won't do that until probably Wednesday. Yeah. You guys are here Wednesday. It's second block that isn't. You're going on that field trip, second block. What? Cumulative? What about it? After we've done it, our second test. You've done one test on exponents and radicals. When we've done all of factoring, ah, the quiz is showing. When we've done all of factoring, you'll write a test on factoring. Then you'll write a cumulative on both. Everybody's good? Now, in a perfect world, in 15 minutes, 18 minutes, I could show you the answers to all these, right? Mm -hmm. That's if everybody worked enough. It would be really nice if you did. Then you could go into your weekend without homework and knowing what you're doing. Wouldn't that be a treat? And five, four, three, two, one. Some sort of song that Roop Joke knows that I do not, so I look like an old man because it must be something hip and cool. All right. We are back to recording. Did anybody draw the picture? No. Nobody bothered? Well, I'm going to quickly draw it. What? Pause. There we go. Uh, and then one, two, three, four, five, six, and they're all negative. How do I cut it up? Two and two, right? Two and two. So there's my group. 
which is 2x minus 3, and there's two of them. If you did the algebra, and you, well, I'm getting to that. If you did the algebra and you did it right, you still have that answer, and I'm happy. Is everybody good? Excellent. No problem. Okay. Step one, decide on the GCF. What is the GCF? 9, 15, and 18. 3, for sure. And an X and a Y, because there's an X and a Y in both of them. So I'm just going to wait for my computer to catch up. 3, X, Y. Now, there's multiple X's and Y's. Is there any more than one that I can get out of everything? No. No. So just an X and just a Y. And then GCF out front, and then all my answers. What is it? 3X plus 5Y minus X cubed Y to the fourth. I'm going to stop after every question because this is one of those elementary things. Like, it's so important to the math that you need to get this. Is everybody good? All right. Let's look at B. I am betting that a great many people in B will have made one small error. What is the, step one is decide on our GCF. What is it? 22. Okay, some people said 11, some people said 22. I want to use 11 on purpose. 11, because 11 goes into both, and then x squared, correct? All right, so then we write our answers. 11x squared, 2x plus 6 y correct now look two and six is there another factor there not three two i can divide those both by two which means a two is coming out we have seen this before when we brought a two out of the radical what did we do with it we multiplied it so what do we do here Multiply, because if it happens once in math, it happens every time in math. And I end up with 22x squared, and then my answers. x plus 3y. Now, if you saw that 22 worked, then you got to here right away. But remember what I said at the very beginning of the lesson. You do a GCF, and then sometimes you need to factor again especially if you didn't quite get the greatest common factor because 11 is only a common factor. Everybody good? All right, what about C? Two would work. Eight would work better because eight goes to all of them. And what letter, Avery? How many C's? Just the one. 8C, what's my first answer? 3C squared minus 2D squared plus CD to the fourth. Can everybody do C? Excellent. D? 5? 1 minus 2z minus 3z squared. Now, in a perfect world, would we write the green part in a different order? Do I care right now? Will I ever take marks away from you? No, because I care that you can factor. 3g plus 6? 3 so it's 3g plus 2. And 8 
8D and 12D squared. 4D. 2 plus 3D. Gouda? Now, again, this next question is one of those things that's exactly the same, but looks different because there's no numbers, correct? So, I got pi r squared plus pi, <clears throat> writing in highlighter, I got pi r squared plus pi r s. What's common? Zara. Pi r. So what goes out front? Pi r. And then the answers go in here. r plus s. Now use that down here. There's r. There's s. So, 5 pi, 5 plus 2, 5 pi times 7, 35 pi. Everybody good? Now, stop for a moment, actually stop talking back corner because it is the end of the week that I told you you could use to straighten yourselves out. And I haven't been incredibly angry with you since I said it. But it's kind of like my rage is on a simmer right now. You've turned it up to one from zero. If you can keep it there, you'll stay there. This is the bane of my existence. Which means I hate it more than just about everything. Because my math students tell me that they can do all of A through F, and then all of a sudden they say they can't do that. Please look and understand that it is exactly the same thing. Which means you should all, in your head, without writing this down, you should all be able to factor what I'm about to write. Peace sign squared fish plus Peace sign, fish, dollar sign. Factor that. Don't say it out loud. Factor it in your head for a minute. That's great. But now I'm telling you, don't say it out loud so everybody else has a chance to factor it in their head. Does everybody have an idea of an answer here? Michael, go. Can everybody do that? It doesn't matter if it's numbers, letters, symbols, drawings, hieroglyphics, cuneiform, pictographs. It doesn't matter. So stop telling me it does. And then page 129, you should be able to do... Well, you should, it should take like two seconds. Shortcut, 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 and distribute, right?